Hello traders, this is Faud Razak Zada, market analyst for City Index. Today is the 18th of April 2024. The dollar yen has made a comeback after falling overnight on the back of that joint statement from finance ministers of Japan and South Korea. Basically, they raised concerns or serious concerns in, in their words about the sharp depreciation of their currencies. But for now, the dollar yen is showing continued strength as traders are continuing to push rates towards that 155 handle where Japan's government is expected to step in uh, in terms of selling the dollar against the Japanese yen. So let's see if we'll see any downward pressure coming in on this currency pair uh, as it approaches that level. Even if we see intervention from Japan, it remains to be seen how much of an impact it will have on this currency pair. Uh, there are some short-term levels to watch on the downside, including 153.35-ish, this area here, the base of this week's breakout. And below that, we have this long-term support area between 151.90-ish to 152, which uh, had been a big resistance level last year and also in October of 2022, before uh, the market pushed above it in early april so this area is now going to be potentially strong support if the market comes back down to retest it it's, it's where i would expect to see it bounce back from but um that's assuming the potential intervention if it comes from the japanese government is not going to be a significant one so keep an eye on that area because if uh, rates were to eventually go below it i think that would be bearish for the dollar yen in terms of the uh, medium term trend is concerned uh, but for as long as we remain above that area, the path of least resistance is going to be to the upside. Now, the euro dollar is looking quite interesting. Uh, it bounced back from around 106 area yesterday before the rally stalled just ahead of resistance in the shaded area. This is where the euro dollar had previously found support back in February and December uh, before breaking below it. So a potential retest of this area could turn into resistance leading to a drop. So far, it looks like the uh, euro dollar has uh, turned lower just ahead of that area. So we may not uh, get a retest of that zone. But right now, price testing support at around 106.50 area, which was the high of Tuesday's candle. So let's see if that level holds. If it doesn't and we break below it, then we could well see a fresh drop to a new 2024 low, taking out this week's earlier low just above the 106 handle. Below that, uh, we have the bottom of this uh, channel at around 105 that's going to be a major support area should price come down to it uh, if it does i'd expect to see a bounce of some sort from around that area bitcoin's halving event is going to take place in the next couple of days and ahead of it we've seen uh, volatility rise on bitcoin uh, and the rally has stalled with price moving below the 21 day exponential moving average the day before saw Bitcoin break below this key support at uh, just above the 60,000 level. This is going to be a key level of support moving forward because as you can see, price has tested this level on a couple of occasions and so far it's holding. So a daily close, I think below this area would be bearish, but un until that happens, the path of least resistance is likely to be to the upside. So watch that area closely uh, moving forward. Should that area break down, then the next downside target could well be at around 53,000 area, which is the base of the previous breakout. On the upside, potential resistance comes in at around this level here, 64,500, uh, which was tested yesterday before price fell. The price of Bitcoin is now coming up to test this area once again. Let's see if it will break through that area on this occasion if it does then this could potentially pave the way for a rally towards the uh, 2021 uh, old record high which comes in at 69,000. this high here and if we were to go above that area then the focus will turn to the all-time high at 73,835 next so those are the key levels to watch on bitcoin now, gold is um, also in focus because it has had a major rally. However, the pace of the rally has weakened and we have seen price continuing to consolidate around the 161.8% Fibonacci extension level of the most significant downswing that took place between August 2020 to September 2022. 
In addition, uh, I don't need to put it uh, here on this chart. You can see on multiple time frames that gold is um, overbought on the RSI indicator. Um, and so people are uh, taking profit following a healthy bullish trend. So far, there are no indications of a potential top, but we did see this uh, inverted hammer candle uh, form last Friday. However, there was no downside follow through. So we'll need to see a break uh, below the low of that candle to potentially trigger some stops that could then lead to a drop possibly to 2300, which is where the 21 day exponential comes in along with the bullish trend line. Below that, we have some further support levels to uh, keep an eye on, but we'll cross that bridge if and when we get there. But for now, uh, the bears need to see a move below the low of this candle at 2,333 to potentially signal a reversal in the trend. Crude oil prices have fallen in the last few days because of raised demand concerns. And uh, yesterday, uh, WTI broke below 84.50 support area. That led to a sharp move lower. Prices fell around 3% on the day. Today, however, we've seen a bounce off the lows after uh, earlier extending those losses. So WTI has come off its earlier lows uh, with price finding support from the base of the previous rally that took place uh, at the end of March uh, at around 81 to 81.50 area. Below that, uh, we have this 80 level, which is a significant support because previously, as you can see, it had um, offered major resistance before the breakout in mid-March. So for as long as it remains above this area, the path of least resistance on crude oil continues to remain to the upside despite the recent weakness. Technology stocks will be in focus as Netflix reports its earnings tonight, which will be the start of the tech earnings. And uh, ahead of that, we can see that the S&P and Nasdaq and all the other major indices have bounced off their lows with the S&P finding support just ahead of the psychologically important 5,000 level. And this is hardly surprising because we've had a four day decline, which meant that the short term uh, oscillators were uh, looking a little bit oversold. But this does not necessarily mean that the rally can hold. Uh, indeed, uh, there is a risk that with bond yields rising uh, because investors have pushed back their rate cut expectations from the Fed, that the path of least resistance could be to the downside for the equity market. So let's see if the uh, S&P will turn lower uh, from around these levels uh, as we head deeper into the US session. Uh, looking closely at the chart, I can see that there's potential resistance around this area uh, at around 5050, 50, which is an area where the index had previously found support as I move this across here. Uh, you can see that uh, this level was in fact resistance turned into support um, before breaking lower on Wednesday. So are we going to see the return of the sellers around here or will we see a break back above this area? Um, and if it breaks above it and holds there on a daily closing basis, I think that would pave the way for a move up to the next area of resistance, which is the shaded region right here. However, the sellers return here, which I think might be the case, then a drop to 5,000 could be on the cards next. And below that, we don't have anything significant until the highs from uh, last year and the year, the year before, corresponding with this area here and this area here. Now for more analysis and insights, make sure to check out the news and analysis section at cityindex.com. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.